Good evening, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, all over the earth, wherever you might be, and all the children of God who listen to this message, this important message for tonight. I miss you all, and I love you all very much, and I pray and hope very soon we'll be together to see you wherever you are right now. Tonight's message is about angels watching. Angels watching to what we do here on earth. So let's read the scripture from uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> Teaching us then that denying our godliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, right, righteously, and godly at the present age. It's important that we deny things that are not godly. It's important that we deny things that are from the flesh. It's important. And be serious, says here, be serious and stay righteous and godly in this present age. Let's see also what First uh, Peter chapter 4 verse 2 says. That he no longer should live the last of his time in the flesh for the last of men, but for the will of God. And if we go and we start from, the, from chapter one, from verse one, it says, "Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he." Who has suffered in the flesh was seized, seized from sin. He also was earthly on this earth here. He was also human. He left his kingdom. He left, he, he left to be uh, the king of kings and being God and came here as a human being. And he suffered. He suffered to the point of, of tears of blood was coming off his face because he was not willing to sin. And in the same way, we can be the same way as well. And also, again, be serious as Christians. Every one of us. And the last scripture on this also, in Luke chapter 1, verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Here was Zechariah. The angel went to him and told him that he was going to have a son. But he didn't believe it. So the angel zipped his mouth until the boy was born. And then when they asked him, what shall be his name? His tongue was loosened and said, John. The Baptist, John the Baptist. That was his son. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he started prophesying after that happened. And he said for us, for everyone, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our lives. That's how we should be, all of us. And he found there the, the hard way because he did not believe. So his mouth was shut for a period of nine months. The Bible tells us that 
our lives are heavenly primary concern. The angels and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they are all looking down to see what we are doing here. Because God is not willing no one to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So it's our time for us to do something on this earth. And to finish our calling. Let's also read the First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty-one. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice doing something with partiality the apostle paul said i charge you timothy before god and the lord jesus christ and the elect angels so he also used the angels in this it wasn't just said god and jesus said the angels as well to observe these things and don't do things impartiality just do it all finish it all properly be serious in your behavior because everything we do we are open before God he sees everything that we do and also the Jesus Christ and the elect angels they're watching every little step than what we're doing. My brothers and sisters, think about this. The angels in heaven right now are watching what we're saying and what we're doing right here. But watching also how we live our Christian lives. You see, the, the angels are watching to see Out of curiosity, on that post, I believe wondering if we file or prove to be faithful. No. They know the era is urgent. And what we do is important. Our calling is important. What God called everyone else to do on this earth is very important. And we need to stand regardless of what comes our way. Regardless of what opposition comes our way. We need to stand our ground and not give in to sin and fulfill His purpose over our lives. Eternal issues are at stake. And we are in the middle of cosmic struggle. The enemy wants to liberate us, all of us, destroy us. He has no power over us if we stay out of sin. But he will bring things your way to entice you to get into sin. Because the minute you're in sin, God lifts his hands up and leaves you. <clears throat> so do you think it doesn't matter where you live? It does matter a lot to God and to Jesus Christ, who He, who you know sin became sin for you. He didn't you know, spare his life for you. So he purchased you with his own blood and saved you for the reason for you to do something that he has 
for you to do on this earth. Now, all of us know about King David. He was a shepherd boy. He was in the mountains and used to talk to God and used to sing to God. And God sent his prophet and anointed him as king. The Bible says David was after God's heart. The Bible also said that after he sinned, he was not willing to completely liberate him. He still left for him one tribe. He broke Israel in two parts to give him Judah for his sons because he wanted his light to still lit in and be, you know, the candle to be still laden. But David. When the kings are going to war, so let's read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. <clears throat> it happened in the spring of the year, for all the time when the kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. That happened one evening that David arose from his bed and awoke on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and that woman was very beautiful to behold. So David said, and he called about this woman, and Simon said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Aliam, Aliam the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent a message and took her, and she came to him, and he lied with her, for she was cleansed from the iniquity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David that she was with child. A king who God had done so much with him and would have given him so much more in the time where he was supposed to be <clears throat> in war, fighting the enemies, he was there looking from his palace and he saw this beautiful woman. And he thought big of himself. I'm a king. I do whatever I want. He called this woman. He woman, this woman, even if she wanted, he could refuse because he was a king of the country. And he had sex with her and didn't stop there. She fell pregnant. But it didn't stop there either. Let's also read First Samuel 13, verse 14. Uh, 
Uh, this is talking about so what is it? This is talking about how uh, I'm gonna read it anyway. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has caused for him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. This will happen with the previous king, Saul, okay? And God giving the kingdom from Saul to David. But here now, there's a couple more scriptures about David. What David did managed to use his commander to put Uriah the Hittite to the wall, close to the wall, to be killed. So therefore, this man is killed, and then he takes Bathsheba to be his, to be his wife, and he tried everything to make Bathsheba his wife to continue in sin. And even so, after his sin, he prayed for the child. But God took the child because the child was from adultery. And before I say what 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 cost what what cost came to David, let's read what the prophet said to him. So let's read from Samuel chapter, Second Samuel twelve. From 1, verse 1 to 15. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. Nathan was a prophet. And he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and one poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one unilamb lamb which he had bought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate his own food and drank from his own cup and lied in his bosom. And he was like a daughter to him. And the traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one of his wife old men and had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared for the man who had come to him. So David, anger was greatly arise against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who done this thing surely die. And he shall restore fourfold of the lamb because he did this and because he had no pity, then Nathan said to David, You are that man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king of Israel, and I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wife in your keeping and he gave you the house of Israel and Judah and if that was not enough too little I also would have given you so much more why have you despised the commandment of the Lord and do evil of his sight you have killed the Uri the Hittite with the sword and you have taken his wife to be your wife and you have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house before you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord. Behold, I will rise up a adversary <clears throat> against you from your own house and I will take 
your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did not secretly, for you did it secretly, but I will do it this thing before Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin, you shall not die. However, before by these deeds you have given great occasion to the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme the child, and also who is born to you shall surely die. And Nathan departed from his house. See, a lot of people think they can get into sin and get away with it and nobody's watching and everything's fine, but the Lord's watching every single step that every one of us do. And David, he should not be surprised when Nathan told him, he was ready to condemn someone else, but no one was ready to condemn himself for what he's done to this man and falling to a great, to a very great sin. So God says, okay, you did this. I want to kill you. Let's see what he said. I'm going to raise up people from your own household. I'm going to cause trouble in your own household. I'm going to, you did it in secret, you slept with someone's wife. I'm going to do it openly. Everybody else will be sleeping with your wives openly. Israel will know openly to what's happening in your life. And what did happen? His son Absalom raised, almost took his kingdom. I did not do only that. Amnon, his son, raped his sister. And then Absalom, which is, 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 is in the brother, killed Amnon, the son of David. All that could it be avoided? And God could even give him more. So I want you to know that every one of us, King David was the man after his God's own heart. So every one of us, let's not talk about King David. Every, every one of us can fall if we don't watch out. It's important that we stay in our ground with that, regardless of what happened. Come your own way. We should not move to the right or the left. We need to stay straight and continue to try and pray and do not allow sin to come into our lives because the devil will come in and will destroy everything in our lives. So if we read now 2 Samuel 13, verse 28. Now Absalom has commanded his servant, saying, Watch now, when Amnon heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid, for I have commanded you to be courageous and valiant. So the servant of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom has commanded. Then all the king's son arose and each one of them got to his mule and fled. And then a message went to King David that all his children son had been killed. <clears throat> so can you imagine that? Can you imagine you being a father and you find out 
First, your son rapes your own daughter, and then your other son kills your other son. Can you imagine that? For me, it would be easier if, if I if I die, it would be much easier than living having one of my children, one of my sons kill my other son. It would be easier for me to die. So. I need you to understand this part of what happened to David and take this as a warning for us as we say, as the angels watching over us to what we're doing, as God and Jesus Christ watching over us to what we're doing. It's important that we stick, as my brother said before, in the, in the narrow path watch everything we do and as the Bible says in Matthew 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men then they might see the good work and glorify your father in heaven let the light of God shine on us for what we do and where we, how we walk and what we do on this earth. And, you know, and also I even know brothers and sisters in the law that, yes, the brothers, they are this, but yet they still lie. People who are supposed to be part of glory to God and they lie. That should not be a thing like this in people of glory to go or any other brother or sister in the Lord. We are children of God and everything we say, if you don't, you know, like, just don't sin, don't do anything wrong, so you don't have to lie. It's important that His light shine on us the why we behave on this earth. Just imagine the host of heavens watching with, with breath taken out to wondering what will be the next thing that we do. Wondering where is <coughs> glory to God going? What are the people of glory to God doing? Are they going to fulfill God's purpose over their lives? Or are they going to fall short? Your life matters to God. And what you do matters to God. And what you do matters to the people who need to be touched by you. All the choices you make matters. Nothing about you is not important or not sufficient, no um, equal-sequential. Doesn't matter. In other words. Everything we do it matters. Every step we do and take it matters. So I'm finishing with this. Live your life. And stay in the calling God has called you to be. If you don't know what your calling is, pray, fast, ask the Lord to tell you exactly where you belong. And fulfill His purpose of your life. But more important than anything here, my brothers and sisters, is don't let the enemy deceive you and take you down the wrong path. And destruction comes in your life. And you can't fulfill this purpose of your life. And you cannot do what you can do on this earth. And the angels cannot. Why can this person to see what's your next thing you're going to do? God bless you all. I love all of you. 
Ne bo preste najbolj vjova. In čisto s nema pravi. Amen.